Week three of the LCS, so there's not as many hype matchups maybe as you saw in week two, but there are still some very intriguing ones uh, to check out. Let's start with some of the big matches in EU. Uh, you've, I mean, it starts off with H2K Unicorns, which isn't exactly screaming hype to me. Yeah, you're not jumping out with your best matchup there. Uh, but some of the big ones here, you've got Shulka taking on Vitality, G2 and Splice, and the big one of the week for sure is Fnatic and Misfits. But uh, starting with that Shulka Vitality matchup, I mean, you've got two guys who are front runners for Rookie of the Split coming into this year in mini true packs and upset going in there. Last week was upset's first week in the LCS, and he, he looked like he still wasn't feeling 100%. I mean, health-wise. Right. After the games, he looked he looked sick still. <laughs> or I don't know exactly. He looked pretty pale. Yeah, I don't Well, he always looked pretty <laughs> pale. But I don't know exactly what he was dealing with. But uh, let's see if still how good Vitality is. They did get kind of manhandled uh, by Misfits. But, I mean, obviously, Jizuki has had a fantastic start to his LCS career. Yeah, it will be interesting to see now. No more rise for Jizuki. Most likely not going to see that champion, but I'm sure he's got more than enough skills left in his bag to take out the rest of the European competition. I am really excited to see how he can perform throughout the rest of the split and if he can continue on this torrid pace uh, to start it out. Yeah, and Shulka, again, with the lineup changes, it's kind of unfair to fully judge what this team's capable of going forward. But I think, I mean, this is a team that I thought could maybe be top three. A lot of people had a lot of hype for, so coming into this week, it'll be Interesting to see how they can perform against a top team so far in Vitality. And I think Shulka has it to win that one. Absolutely. And then, hey, this is a match to watch if you, if you care about the European LCS because this is absolutely a matchup between two teams that will be contending for these playoff spots, possibly even to go to the finals. So this is definitely one that I would want to keep an eye on. And as you said before, that matchup in the bot lane is definitely going to be a spicy one to look at. Two very talented rookies with mini true pack and upset in there. Really looking forward to that matchup. Yeah, and obviously it's supposed to be the year of Nuke Duck with all these mid laners leaving, <laughs> right. going up against Can't Jizuki. forget about Nuke Duck. If he gets completely dumpstered by the Italian Stallion, hey. eh, maybe next year, Nuke Duck. <laughs> but uh, I think that'll be a pretty interesting matchup too. Uh, G2 and Splice, two, guy, two teams that have a lot of question marks right now. Oda has looked terrible. He has splice. looked like so bad compared to what you would have ever expected from him. Even just expecting, you know, average performance from this guy. And they are just not getting it from him. And that definitely needs to change if they're going to turn around their fortunes. Yeah, and for G2, I mean, Perks has looked pretty good. He's looked like one of the better mid laners in the ULCS. But I mean, outside of that, Hjarnin has looked lost out of position a lot of times. And Yankos has been irrelevant, invisible a lot of the time. Right, Yankos has not had the impact that you or I or anyone would have really expected or hoped to have seen from him uh, when he was announced as the jungler for G2. And you're looking at, you know, Wonder in the top lane, you're not getting absolutely any standout performances from him. He's not necessarily hurting you either. But I think that's something where you're really looking at this team with G2 is that, yeah, you know, perks can be the carry most of the time here for us. But at some point, we need to find secondary third options to get these wins because that's what we had for all these years prior when we had the dominant bot lane and everything else. You just need to find these other ways to actually get to victories and get your accomplishments done. And because if you only have one way to do it, it's quite easy for the other teams to stomp that win condition out. So I think we're seeing that with G2 and some of the struggles that they've had early. And maybe if, you know, maybe this roster gels together a little bit better and gets on the same page and maybe see a little bit more of a impact from Yankos in the jungle, yep. then we'll see a return to a successful G2. Just bring up the Nunu. That's an easy way to have impact on the game. <laughs> oh. Just yeah. might steal that seconds. one though, I think that one, the full blame goes to your opponents then for not banning out Nunu at that point. Yeah, I think Wonder has actually been the second best player on G2 early on in the split. Uh, uh, Wadid has missed a lot of skill shots. He played that Thresh game and he was... Not, make, not making any hooks, uh, which is something we're accustomed to seeing from him. Usually one of the more skill shot accurate support players in EU. So it's kind of odd considering they already have that inherent synergy in that bottom lane too, him and Kjarnan from Rocket last split. But I think G2 will get back, at least start to get back on track. I think they'll take that game against Splice. Splice, a team that, again, had a decent amount of hype and has looked very suspect in... Um, 
the first couple of weeks. Yes, they beat Shulka. Kabe got a penta kill. He you know, put some insane damage in that game. But uh, yeah, we talked about Odawamni not looking that great. Xerxy has been a little bit hit or miss so far. And Niski, in my opinion, has maybe been the second worst mid laner so far in EU. He has not been a pickup that's really worked out, unfortunately. He looked great in NA. I thought, that's what I thought, absolutely. You know, this was a guy that was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bjergsen and Jensen and actually coming out on top sometimes in those matchups. So definitely was someone that we were expecting a lot from when he was going to be on Splice and thinking that this could be, you know, another player that they can use as a carry to impact their performances but it just hasn't worked out for them so far. We're not seeing enough from this roster, given the talent that we know is there. They need to find a way to step up and perform better because this is a team that should find themselves up towards the top spots in Europe and is not there right now. And then the marquee, probably most excitable uh, matchup in EU this week is gonna be Misfits taking on Fnatic. Right now, Misfits look like the best team in EU after taking down Vitality. Again, they lost an inhib in 18 minutes. Before 20 minutes against Pretty Vitality, crazy. they turn it around, Maxlor gets a Baron Steel, and then the game's over! Like five minutes after they get that Baron Steel. So, Misfits are looking like the strongest team in EU. Fnatic, they just beat G2 in possibly the ugliest game of the I was split. gonna say that, like, this is our match to watch up this week for EU, and it's like, I hope it's gonna be better than the one that we had Oof. last week, because we were excited to watch G2 and Fnatic, and it was maybe one of the worst games of the week. The Battle of the Kings! <laughs> yeah, so hopefully uh, this one turns out better. I'm expecting better things in this matchup. I think Misfits is really at the top of their game in Europe right now. Maxilor is absolutely proving himself as one of the top tier junglers in that league, let alone in the Western region. So I think that that is certainly a matchup to, match to watch. And if you're looking on the Fnatic side, they've talked about what success they want to find in this split. And they really want to find ways to get victories that aren't just from reckless carrying them. They said that we've been a team for so long where it's reckless, reckless, reckless. We need to have games where guys like Caps and Broxa can step up and be the ones to get the victory and accomplish these win conditions for Fnatic. So I really want to see if this is the week that the rest of the Fnatic roster steps up and helps Reckless out. Yeah, and even Reckless has uh, or even Reckless hasn't well been below his standard that he set last year and for most of his career. But for Misfits, yeah, they look great. But a guy for me in the mid lane, Senkux, he hasn't had to do much. I feel like he hasn't done that much. He's been a little bit underwhelming so far in that mid lane. Again, it's not, he hasn't lost them any of these games by any means. But, I, you know, I was expecting a little more from him, but still plenty of time. And there's been a lot worse performers than him. Right. If you're going to nitpick, I think you would like to see a little bit more from him in the way that you feel like he can impact this composition of a roster. Uh, but I think on the bright side, if you're Misfits, Hansama has looked just as good as he's ever looked he's before. Looked and he's absolutely right up there at the top of the list as far as CS per minute. So he's really playing at the top of his mechanical game. Good things to see for Misfits Gaming. It was Sven gone and Reckless playing a little below his standard. Hansama might be the best AD Could step EU? up and be the EU superstar in the bot lane. Uh, let's jump to these NA matchups heading into week three. Uh, I mean, you had a plethora of them the first couple of weeks. Not a as hype again heading into week three. This but, is a bit um, of a down week for NA, not not the premier matchups, but some pretty good ones here. Some pretty good ones. Uh, CLG Echo Fox. Is CLG actually a terrible team? We're gonna find out when they're up against Echo Fox. Uh, can TSM finally get back to winning games consistently against 100 Thieves? That's a tough test. And I wanna see what team Clutch Gaming actually is. Are they either Fabivin 1v9ing them to a stomp or getting absolutely crushed? So we'll see how they match up against Cloud9, but that CLG Echo Fox game, that could get ugly. That one's gonna be really important for CLG. Could because be ugly. Because if you get stomped by Echo Fox here, I think that really solidifies Echo Fox in their own minds. You know, CLG is a, a storied franchise, obviously, in the LCS, and to you know, be ahead of them you know, firmly with a victory for them if they can get it would be a great feather in their cap, and even more so if that they've already accumulated this split, and moving forward with that type of confidence would be great for them. And then on the CLG side, you do need to start picking up wins. Just flat out, doesn't matter against Or at who. least looking like you could win the right, game. Right, you do need to have these better performances at the very least, let alone picking up these wins. And Echo Fox would certainly be a team that would gather quite a lot of attention if you were able to best them. Although, from the way that it's been looking so far with CLG's play, I don't think that, that we'll be seeing that. Yeah, and 
I want to, I mean, Echo Fox is going to lose a game eventually. I don't see them going 18 to 0. I want to say, you know, maybe CLG, they should actually be a good team and maybe take one off Echo Fox, but I haven't seen anything in these first four games to make me feel like CLG can win this game. Right, my biggest concern is that, you know, when you're looking at what's going wrong for CLG, right now the bot lane is nowhere near as strong Oof. as it needs to be. It's Stixay bad. and Biofrost are both looking like players that are severely missing their more established partners that they've been playing their, their start of their careers with, and it's really hurt this team. And now when you're bringing in a matchup against Echo Fox, it's not that, you know, Adrian is some amazing bot lane down there, but when you're talking about them, they're incredibly solid. They have not been outperformed or smashed by any other team so far, and I don't think that that's gonna change with obviously the CLG bot lane coming in, and so it's going to be a very stiff test for Counter Logic Gaming going up against Echo Fox. Yeah, and especially, I mean, Rainover's a guy who has gotten way too aggressive in a lot of these games, gotten caught out and cost CLG pretty severely. Dardock's a guy who's been playing out of his mind the last couple of weeks, and when he's got two aggressive winning solo laners in Huni and Phoenix, he's just had a field day. Oh yeah, and it's absolutely going to be a matchup to watch, because I'm excited to see what the difference is going to be. CLG is definitely a team that we've talked about, has the mechanical skills, all sorts of things, but one thing that is most likely missing, that we have seen is missing, is this ability to make plays decisively, to make these calls of what you should be doing when, and to make it with the full, uh, with your full effort into it. Now, what you are seeing though from Echo Fox is that exact thing. They mentioned it when talking about their victory against TSM and what TSM was also doing wrong is you see these things and you listen to the calls, you know, Mythy's asking, oh, we got these two kills, should we do Baron now? Whereas on the other side, you're listening to the Echo Fox calls and they are very decisive, they're commands almost, on what they need to be doing at every single moment of team fights or preparations for them. And that is something that we're seeing has ex exploded them to the top. Of the, of, the, of the rankings. Yeah, and they've shown that they can play through pretty much any lane. Any lane can get ahead and they can kind of carry that advantage into a victory, which it's is- not just the Hooney show. It's not just the Hooney show. Last week he got camped pretty hard oh. in a couple of games. Oh, yeah. Didn't really have a chance to play the game as Dyrus used to say, I just want to play League of Legends. Hooney nope. didn't get to, but the rest of the team did. So, right. hey, boy did they ever. Showing some serious diversity early on. Uh, maybe the most intriguing match of the week for me is that TSM versus 100 Thieves. Obviously 100 Thieves knocked off Liquid uh, in week one. Then they got, they got pretty easily handled by Cloud9, but uh, this will be a, a tough test for TSM to see. People are still expecting them. I'm still expecting them to be a top team, and to be a top team, you're gonna have to beat some other good teams like 100 Thieves. Absolutely, and when you're looking at TSM coming into this week, they play the first match they play this week is against the Golden Guardians. One would have to assume that that's a victory for TSM. And Ring that, the alarm bells if they lose that right. one. Right, but if they so they win that one and that leaves them with one win to get back to 500. You once again, can they do it this time? I don't think so. I think 100 Thieves will best TSM, even with TSM, I am assuming, making more improvements and finding better synergy and communication with their roster. I think that 100 Thieves will have the advantage heading into this one just based off how they've been playing. If you looked at TSM, one of their biggest weaknesses, even seeing some signs of life from them, has been absolutely their macro play. It has been completely sloppy and unorganized and not been a strength for them, which is what you need to and what you usually see from a roster as veteran as TSM. And now when you look at 100 Thieves and you talk about exactly what they're able to do, probably their head coach has talked about this, saying that this is not a team, we have too many issues with their veteran players that are going to be able to absolutely crush in team fights. That's not our strength. Right now, our strength is absolutely in our domination of the macro elements of this game. And that is why I think 100 Thieves will beat TSM. They're gonna out macro them and they will smash them on the map. Yeah, and I think it's not going to be a flip of the switch turnaround for TSM. You saw progress last week. They went one and one. And I mean, they played for like three hours in two games. But uh, I think it'll be a close game between them and 100 Thieves. But yeah, I think they're just not quite there yet to beat some of these top four teams. Uh, that you have mentioned how so long far. TSM had played. You Clutch Gaming finished both of their games combined last week were less time than TSM's matchup against Opt. Yeah, 
Clutch either completely dumpsters yeah. them because Febivin gets insanely fed, or they look like a team who shouldn't be in the LCS. All right, so TSM definitely still a lot of things that need to be fixed with the, their gameplay, not the roster. I think the roster is very solid. Yeah. Uh, but this is some improvements that we're going to have to see from them, and this is going to be, aside from Golden Guardians, a tough test for them. I think 100 Thieves will really give them a good measuring stick of, you know, are you up there? Because 100 Thieves is definitely someone who I consider a contender in the NALCS, and TSM right now I would assume would be a contender, but you got to prove it at you some point here, it. so this and, would be a uh, good victory if they can. But if, I'm picking 100 Thieves. If they lose to Golden Guardians, TSM, they are going to be tilted oh. off the face of the earth and have no chance in that 100 Thieves. That match. is one of the things that's you know working against these TSM players, and you talk about you know Sven and Miffy being there's on so G2 much and, pressure on and Mike Young. There's so much pressure on them to perform, but not only that, like you know Sven and Miffy have had a lot of pressure being on G2. That's a like, more organization uh, unfamiliar to that, but it's never at the level of TSM. It's when you're talking about you know Western League of Legends, there is no organization like TSM, and that fan base that they have and how you know how much they expect and demand success and as far as that goes you haven't seen it with this roster so these players are going to hear it and you know on the flip side if you're mike young you might not have heard any type of criticism or as much criticism when you were on phoenix one even oh, if you had a, even if you had a worse performance there at, uh, in certain matchups you wouldn't have felt it the same way the community does in these type of matches so it's definitely on tsm to have a thick skin and keep focused on what they need to have in order to improve yeah, the turnaround from the praise and hype that Mike Young got, fidget spinner galore <laughs> when he was on P1 to when he came on a TSM. Even the first tournament that he played in, that All-Star event, he was getting An roasted All -Star event. for when that one. that doesn't matter and you're yeah, getting roasted. Before he's played a game on TSM. Definitely it's just tough. like having a massive cloud over you when you're playing on TSM. Uh -huh. And uh, when you're winning, the cloud separates and there's sunshine and birds singing. But when you're losing... It's pouring rain and you're getting struck by lightning. Yeah, you're in paradise when you're winning. You're on yep. the uh, top NA franchise, League of Legends. So Everybody's many fans, going your everyone way. loves everyone you. Everyone loves you. You're losing. Everybody hates you. Don't go Not on only the, the TSM fans, the rest of the League of Legends subreddit and everybody's on your case. Tough life, but hey, someone's got to do it, right? I would stay off social media if I yeah. was uh, Mike Young going forward. Uh, last matchup is that clutch squad that we were talking about going up against Cloud9. This bipolar team that is either Febivin does everything or we get completely sma smashed. I want to see, is this team actually good? Maybe do they have the potential to actually beat Cloud9? A guy like Lyra has struggled early on. Yeah, Lyra has absolutely not been the performer that you need to have for clutch gaming. And I think that's why you find themselves in these matchups where they just get absolutely smashed or they either smash the other team and win. Because when it happens for Clutch Gaming, they are getting the plays, they're getting the kills for Febivin, they're getting their carries ahead. But when they're losing, it's just not working in any of the lanes and it's happening so fast that they don't have time to either stall out the game and find their own win conditions or whatever they need to to get these into back into the matchup. Now, for Clutch Gaming, I think that with Lyra, you will find an improved performance. This is someone who knows that he needs to be better for this team and is going to be counted upon more for this team. And you need to, especially with the meta that's coming in, have the jungler be a strong strength pillar for your team in order to stay competitive throughout the rest of the game. So I think that Lyra is going to be someone that will step up and help Clutch Gaming find a more consistent performance. Yeah, and it's been surprising early on in this split that the second best player on Clutch has probably been Solo. The guy who had the most no, question marks. I would marks. not have expected that. People were expecting him to not even be at an LCS level, but I mean, he, he good. like Licorice, has played some carry champions. He's been putting out insane damage percentages for the squad. Uh, so this will be a big test this week. It's a, it's a tough week for Clutch. Yeah, I, we were just watching that pentakill again from Febivin on that Azir and shaking my head. It's just, I don't know what CLG was thinking. But anyways, Clutch Gaming will have a good week, I think, this week. I think this is definitely one where they're going to step up and, and show that, hey, we've got this skill. You've seen it in our victories. Those times that we've been stomped have been a bit of a mistake. We're going to correct that. Well, we'll see if they're up to the task of taking on Cloud9. But I think they have the potential to take them down if Lyra gets back to some of his old form that we're used to I'm excited to seeing. for that Licorice and Solo matchup now. Going to be a really uh, tough one to watch up. Yeah, it's not a, exactly a hype top lane matchup that you'd be expecting, but it actually nope. is pretty hype. But it's going to work out pretty yeah. good for us.
Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.